Moving on to the midfielders then. Uh, we'll start with Deli Ali, probably one of the first names on the team sheet for the opening game. Just 21 years old. What, what a talent he is. Is that what he's 21? I thought he was younger than that. But Might be. Oh, it's superb. Look at where he's come from. Yeah. Um, what a great season he's had. He's going to be one of them, whether he starts or comes off the bench, we're going to be excited to see him. Some of his goals he's got, but he's an all-round player. He actually reminds me a little bit of a, a young Zidane, actually. Um, so, you know, whether he starts or comes on, he's going to be exciting. And I think he will, he will, uh, we'll see some sort of special, special stuff come from him in the tournament. You, you look at the goal of the season he scored against Palace, uh, it just shows what incredible ability mm. he's got, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think if you look at that midfield that he's, he's got to choose from, there's a lot of great individual talented players in there. He likes a Barkley, Lallana, Ali. They're all talented players, and if, if when it comes to the crunch on match day, what Roy and the rest of the staff will be looking at, can they bring that all together as a team? And if they can, on paper we've we've got a serious yeah, serious exciting, serious man. team. Be exciting. It just shows that going out on loan to a lower league club, in this case MK Dons, it does mm. it does prove you worth, doesn't it? In the end, because look where he is now. It gives him that experience mm. at that that mm. young age. A lot of players, 18, 19, 20 years old, are not playing first team football, and that Deli Ali got that at MK Dons, yeah. and he, and, he, and it, it, it gave him that experience to sort of build on. He's got a great move to Tottenham. People at Tottenham believe in his abilities. That's why they've paid that money for him. And and now look at him. He's no, he's not looked back. He's he's like you say, the first name on the England sheet, England team sheet, which is in in going into a a, a massive tournament, and that that's that's brilliant for the young lad. And will he partner Dyer? Do you think? I think he will. I think so. I think Dyer will. Dyer again, another one of the first names on the team sheet. I think he's proven this year, especially at international football. I think he'll just step straight into it. The way he plays, the way he glides across the pitch. That defensive quality that he brings to his game, as well as his passing ability, I think he, he he's another one that will definitely start. You're a big fan of Dyer, aren't you, Mikey? Oh, massive fan. You know, he's uh, he's had a good pedigree and so on. But like they were saying, there, he's just got a bit of everything. He can play centre back, right back, left back, um, holding midfield. I think one of the big things for him is, is it depends on what style we're going for. But if Walker was to play or Klein, if they bomb on, he can easily just step in at right back position like he has done for Spurs this year. Because his brother used to do that, didn't he, Kieran? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was he. <laughs> one of your favourites. <coughs> I think going back to that one there, the young lads, there's quite a lot of them have gone out on loan. Kane's been out on loan, mm -hmm. Townsend's been out on loan, talking about Ali. I think most of them have had a lot of experience of, of playing whether it's in Championship or Premiership, which mm -hmm. is great. Uh, another interesting one, Jack Wilshire has been named in the 26 man original squad. Is he driving the bus? <laughs> <laughs> How many jokes? Uh, he's only played one game, and that was last day of the season, last, last week. And what are your thoughts on him being included? Again, Roy loves him, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Listen, let, let, let's be honest. Jack Wilshire is a fantastic talent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He is one of the best players in England when he's fit and ready to go. Key is when he's fit, that's the question. That is the big key. And unfortunately this season he's, he's, he's been struck down with injuries again, which we keep talking about year on year. But he's got so much ability, Pe people are, are still believing in him, mm. that he can, he's, he's making an England squad again. Can he, can he do it at this level? And he certainly can. It's just about getting that consistency, getting that, getting that physical fitness back into his game where he can actually compete mm -hmm. at that level. Do you think he should have been included? Me personally, no. I think no. I think he's I think his quality, like they were saying, he's absolutely top draw. I think he's one of the best midfielders we've got. He's he's got a different dimension to his style of play, which which is good for us. But I'm I'm huge on you've got to have so many minutes if you're going to go into a major it, competition. It's, it's good that you mentioned that because Michael Carrick has played regularly for Manchester United this season, and Matt Noble, who's been. Uh, who's played yeah. every game virtually from for West Ham. What about them two people that have not made the squad? Well, Carrick's got a lot of experience, hasn't mm -hmm. he? He's a he's a ball player. He's very similar to the to the Dyers of this world. Um, I think I was I was surprised Michael Carrick didn't get in mm -hmm. get in it get in actually. I thought he might have been in there just for his experience along side that sit and roll just just to shore up games if they do get themselves in front. He, he's a good head to have in there to put in the midfield just to, to give them a bit more security. Uh, Mark Noble, people have people have questioned whether he, he should be involved. He's, he's, he's had a fantastic season, Mark Noble, but I think when you look at the the players on the list, mm -hmm. the, the midfielders that we've got to choose from, 
the, I think the other ones outweigh Mark yeah. Noble for me personally. What do you think, Mikey, in terms of Noble and Carrick <laughs> behind Wilshire? I think Wilshire's a total different style of player. Yeah. Um, I think he's. I know he can play the deeper role, but he can play between the, the four and the eight. He can, mm. He's good good in the pockets. Again, I agree with the Carricks. The one, you know, would he come in and play over Dyer? Probably not. Um, but I think you know, sort of sealing up a game or possession based mm. game, he'd, he'd be fantastic. But if you look at the last few games England have played, been quite direct, and I don't mean long ball. I mean he's going forward quickly, whereas Carrick's more controlled and. Um, a bit like the Spanish sort of style. Mm. So, again, it just depends on what style yeah. Roy's yeah. looking for. I think he's looking for a lot of energy in his team. Yeah. I think yeah. he showed that in the last couple of internationals. They, they, all the lads who played, you could see they're pressing hard. They're trying to win the ball back high up the pitch. I think you like Sir Michael Carrick and he wants to sit off and control the game. Uh, at every, slow it, slow yeah, it down. Yeah, every, every, stage, every stage of the game he wants to do that. Um, it, that pressing game's not really his, his game, so... I think, like like you can see from the team sheet that Roy's put out there, mm. um, he's going for a lot of energy in there, especially in that midfield and strikers. Mm. Nelly, do you say you wouldn't take Wilshire? Or you would take Wilshire? Oh, no, I'd, I'd definitely take Wilshire, yeah, I think, yeah, definitely Even after one game. Yeah, he's had one Premier League game, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's played a couple of under-21 games and, yeah. you know, he's clearly fit now. He's, he's fit whether he's match fit, whether he's, he's, you know, like Mikey says, whether he's played enough. Um, and often... You know, the, the, like the sports scientists will say, you know, you're not back up to, you know, full full speed, for want of a better word, until you've maybe played eight or ten games. Yeah. But um, again, Roy trusts him. Roy, you know, Roy likes him, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. And uh, different to, yeah, you know, we're talking about Carrick, and Carrick's not even in there, but he's a, he's a different type of player, isn't he? He's, mm-hmm. You know, he's a great passer, yeah. same as Carrick, but he'll go and join in and get forward, and, and he, he's more of a goal threat. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's got many goals for him, but he's got one or two yeah. recently, haven't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a massive fan. But again, it's only 11 places, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd still go for Paul Scholes. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jack Colbert, no. <laughs> <laughs> Another one that comes under that, yeah. that, under that bracket, yeah. uh, John Henderson, who's, I think he came off the bench on Saturday against West Brom, on Sunday against West Brom. How do you feel about him being included? Not having him, mate. Having him. Something done in the name. <laughs> I like Henderson. I think he's he's proven. Mm. He's uh, he's got better year on year. I think at Liverpool. I think he's he's took a bit of responsibility at his as club being captain as well. Um, so yeah, I think I think he deserves to be in there, even though he's only just coming back from injury. I think he's 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 already proved that he's he's a valuable asset to to Roy's squads, um, and I think he'll have a big role to play um, in this tournament coming up. I think Roy will probably go with him. If, um, if he's quite, if he's right and ready to go, I think that these these friendly matches will, will determine that with his fitness. But I think if he is right and he proves it in the next friendlies, uh, I think he'll be a definite starter. Mackie, I'd go with that. Yeah. I think um, I think if he's fit, he starts. He's just great for balance. I know there's some some fans will recognise what he does, but for balance in midfield, he's absolutely top draw. He's got loads of energy. I think on the fitness side of it, he looks after himself well. Mm. I, I think he doesn't drink. He eats healthy all the time. So he'll get his fitness back quickly, um, but like I say, he's just great for for the balance um, right through the midfield for England. I think his attributes as well as being a captain at Liverpool this mm-hmm. year will definitely be needed in the squad. It's it, when you go away from your families and your friends, and you, you you've got that tight knit group for so many days away from home, I think you like Sir Henderson being a role as a captain as at his club. He'll, he'll have a big influence on the squad behind closed doors where people won't see um, and I think that'll be that'll be massively important a few more players to throw to you Lalana, James Milner and Ross Barkley any qualms about them being included? yeah Barkley started all day for me Everton <laughs> <laughs> um, but no not just not just because of that but he's just got a natural ability mm-hmm. but we're saying this not, not the best season at Everton mind. no but he's been one of the plus points yeah. um, in a not a very good season for, mm. for Everton Football Club, but he's, he has been one that has at times shown glimpses of what he is capable of. And he's he's got so much ability, but we've seen, look at the midfield players in the squad. They've all bring something to the table. They've all got that natural ability to change a game, and if we can get them all playing as a team, mm-hmm. that'll be that'll be where we probably win it. Mm-hmm. I think it's about the balance, isn't it? Because. Um, 
Barkley and Lalana both both unlock unlock a defence gap. They're mm -hmm. both yeah. you know very very good players. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know you can make a case for everybody in the squad yeah. apart from Henderson obviously. <laughs> um, it's and it's just eleven into yeah. or twenty three into eleven. Mm -hmm. I think it comes down to style. I think if he wants to play narrow, he can play them. If he wants to play wide, he's got to change it and play Sterling and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty is we've got options mm -hmm. um, and it's exciting options. Mm -hmm. You know, If we're sat there one nil down and you've got Barkley and Lallana to come on or a, a Sturridge or a Sterling, you're excited. Mm -hmm. Whereas thinking back to the last few competitions, you're thinking, oh, how are we going to get back to this? Yeah. Uh, but back in this, so. So I, I think looking at that midfield <coughs> that he's picked, I think if out of possession, if they can have a structure of what they get into, because at international level, teams, it's a slow paced game anyway, so they will have time to get back into a defensive shape. I think going forward when they're in possession, I'd like to see them, like he has shown against Germany recently, let them play with the freedom and let them express themselves and let them do what, what they're all capable of individually. And I think that'll be really important because I think that's what the British public want to see as well. I think they want to see a real fast-flowing, attack-minded style of England team that excites people, gets people off, off the chairs. Mm. I think we potentially with this group, we, we have got that. I think what will be important is can they recover back into the, a, a structured shape when they lose the ball. Mm. Uh, Danny Drinkwater of Leicester, who, who have had a remarkable season. Uh, he's been included in the 26-man provisional squad. How do we feel about Drinkwater being in it? That's in important. If, will, will he make the 23-man squad, do you think? Well, it's important, isn't it? Drink water. Mm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to drink some water. <laughs> Unfortunately, even though he's a Premier League winner now, he's had a fantastic season. Uh, I think it might be too soon for him with the with the quality mm. that's available <clears throat> at Roy's disposal. Um, I don't know. It's uh, everyone's sort of itching for drink water to get in there. Obviously, been with Canty all season. He also also been. Uh, yeah, amazing. Well, they, yeah. they've worked well together as a mm -hmm. pair, haven't they? Yeah. Kante's full of energy, he defends really well. Drinkwater's a bit more of a ball player, good distribution. So it has been a good balance with them too. Um, going forward in the England squad, I think I don't think he's going to be a starter. Mm -hmm. I, I hope. Uh, to be fair, for a season that he's had, I hope he does make the twenty-three. Um, but I don't think he'll get much game time. If I'm being honest, um, I think there's there's people ahead of him in the pecking order. Yeah. Okay. I think it depends on the fitness of everybody else, you know, see how Henderson is, see how Wiltshire is. But if they're all fit, I don't think he gets in, uh, which is a shame because he's had a great season and he is a top, top player. I think another thing maybe going against him is he's only played in a two all year. Yeah. Can't see him playing a two. So is that a factor of, of Roy going, <coughs> you're going to come play for us, but we're going to change the tactics. It's a yeah. big risk. Um, but. To be fair to him, what a great season he's had, and he is a good, good player. And like they were saying, it might have just come too soon for him, unfortunately. Deserved to call it, didn't he? Deserved it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, two Man City players now Raheem Sterling and Fabian Delph. Uh, Delph, slightly um, suspect, you could say, about being called up. No, I think Delph's in. Head. No. Me, Delph's in. I think if you look at what Roy's done, where he's played the 4 2 3 1, and then he's played the Diamond, Delph is perfect for the Diamond. Um, he played very more... little all season for City, though. He has, but he's fit, he's quick, he's, whenever he's played for England he's been superb. Uh, if you look, if they do play a diamond, he usually plays on the left or the right. He can cover wide areas, he's technically a good player. Um, like we're saying, if we're going to play with loads of energy, he's perfect for that. Now, would he start? Again, that comes down to, to what shape Roy goes with. But I just I just think, he, he, for me, I think he's got to go because of that balance and he can do a number of jobs and he's a fit young lad and, and I know behind the scenes he's a, he's a really good character as well. Ryan, about Delph? Um, there's a question mark for me mm -hmm. with Delph. One, because of his game time this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the negative points, but <coughs> I think, like, my, like Mikey says, the plus point for me for him is he can give you that balance, um, whatever shape you want to get to. He's got he's a left footer. He, he, we haven't got many left footers in throughout the squad. So he does give you that balance on that side. And he can play both roles. He can sit yeah. and he can... We've seen he, he can drive forward as well. He can be an impact going forward. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he does with Delph mm. when he narrows the squad down. If he is on the plane or or if he's not, but but yeah, for me there's definitely a question mark over it. I'd like to see what game time he gets in the front lines. 
before I make a decision on him. Yeah. Just on uh, Raheem Sterling, he's not had a great season at City. Uh, I think everyone can see that. Uh, how do you feel about Sterling for England? Will he be starting, do you reckon? Again, it comes to it comes down to what shape he's yeah. playing. I think if he's looking to exploit the wide areas he plays, um, whether he's having a good game or bad game as a fullback, you don't want to play against you don't want to play against him. He's quick. He can go on the inside. He can go down the outside. Mm. He has got a goal in him. Yeah. Um, if we were to look more at the the narrow side, he probably won't play. But again, he just gives us that option. And again, I know we keep saying it, but the balance, um, he's got to go for me. Yeah. And he's gonna he's gonna be one of the best wingers in the world, mm. no doubt about it. If he keeps progressing the way he's going. I'm playing plays these we've got him at yeah. our disposal yeah. in our squad that you wouldn't want him being in any of the other international squads that you're gonna be facing mm. because he is unpredictable, he's lightning fast. Yeah. Um he could work on his finishing a bit more. I think he yeah. that, that's one thing that lets us lets his game down slightly. Yeah. Um but he gets into positions to get them chances and yeah. somebody's making your phone. Just <laughs> absolute pure raw raw talent mm. and I, I, th- I th- He's definitely got to go, whether that be as a starter or as an impact player. Uh, the final midfielder on the uh, on the squad list is uh, Nelly's favourite, Andros Townsend. Another one of this little question mark over, I think no you say. Chance, no, uh, no I'll, I'll throw that out there to you. He's, he's got a few goals, obviously, towards the end of Newcastle's season, which ended in uh, relegation. Sorry. It's got a bit of beer, <laughs> Wherever he's been, he's gone out on loan several times from Tottenham, and, and wherever he's been, he's scored goals, hasn't he? Yeah. He scored some great goals for England, uh, for Newcastle, sorry, uh, but he scored goals for England, hasn't he? Um, and is it again? He's another one. Keep sound like a broken record, but Roy is loyal, and Royal, I, I think, is a hundred percent certain to go, whether he's a starter or a come, you know, come on yeah. from the bench. Um, I think he's a definite starter, and I, he excites me. Black and white all over. <laughs> right. Yeah, I like him. Um, I think one thing in his game that he needs to improve is his inconsistency. Mm-hmm. I think. I think what he does do though is, he saves his best games for the big games, mm-hmm. and I think Royal know that, and I think that's why he's on that sheet. Mm-hmm. I think it's a tournament. In the big games like that, you look to your, to your players to who have got something a bit different and. He's, he certainly brings that to the table. Understands him. Um, wherever he's been, he scores. He scores goals mm-hmm. from. He, he, he scores goals from inside the six yard box. He scores goals from twenty five yards out. He just adds a bit different, but also he creates as well. Mm-hmm. He's he, he drags players out. Two or three players go out to him to try and combat him, mm-hmm. make space for other people. So he has got that that bit something a bit different, and I, I think he'll definitely definitely go. Um, it's just whether he starts or, or not. Okay. Depends on formation. Another lefty, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Like you say, we another lefty. We ain't got, of course, I do. <laughs> yeah, but he's another lefty. I think um, he's not consistent enough week in, week out in the Premiership, but whenever he's played for England, he's been absolutely outstanding. That's the key, isn't it? He's fought for England. Mm-hmm. Well, he saves his best players. for the big games. Yeah. He, he always produces it on the big stage, and there's no bigger stage than playing for you. Your country, so. We were talking earlier, you've got them players, Germany have done it for years, mm. they'll have like, we were talking about clubs earlier really, yeah. where they don't have a great season but then suddenly he gets called upon because they rely upon him and then he gets the golden boot and is he going to be one of them, I don't know. Um, he's, I think he's still only a young lad as well isn't he, I don't think mm. he's that old. So. Yeah. But again, as a manager, if you stood there and, and you want to change a game and you turn around and he's there, you're thinking, you Very can well. go and do it, mm. so another exciting prospect for us I think. I think one thing with that with Townsend is he has been out on loan a few times and mm-hmm. he's he's not been quite right for the Spurs team and he's obviously gone to Newcastle. Maybe there might be a question mark over his maybe his attitude mm-hmm. or something within the squad, yeah. um, which he doesn't get mm-hmm. when he when, when he's in the England camp because um, they do seem to get the best out of him there. Yeah, yeah I'm going to throw some midfielders out to you that haven't made the squad. Uh, Theo Walcott, yes or no? Should he be included? Not for me. No? No. I mean, Roy did say that he hasn't got enough minutes under his belt this season, whereas Jack Wilshere's had mm. one game. Well, that's a bad excuse, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's not the best uh, reason. Especially when you look at some of the players mm-hmm. that he's chose, and he's given them excuses. But I, I, don't, I, I agree, I don't think Walcott's no. done enough to deserve a place in the squad. Um, mm. But again, he's another one. A talented player on his yeah. day, who can terrorise the teams. 
where yeah. there's, where there's just pure pace. Uh, the, the, the final interesting one for me is uh, Mikel Antonio at West Ham, who's been rated the third best player, English player in the Premier League this season. Can play right back, right wing, right forward. Uh, he's got 15 goals and assists. He's more than Lallana, Sterling, Rashford, and Townsend. Why, why has he not been included? It's, it's a great point. I think it's a great point. I think you brought it up earlier, and I was like, I've not really seen too much of him, if I'm honest. Um, I've heard his name about. Mm. Obviously, you've told me his stats, which are which are great. Mm. Um, again, he's just. I don't know if he's been in any of the England youth teams, has he? No, he's I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's um, but I just. I think it's just one of them. I think he hasn't. He hasn't got into the England squad yet, and mm. would it be too much now to throw him in? I think nearly everybody who's in the England squad, I was, I was in that 26 now, has had at least one appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be a big one for him. And I think Roy's probably gone with players who he's, he's already had in there. Yeah. And then he's having a look at them who've already had one appearance or maybe two appearances. But again, it might have just come too soon for him. Mm-hmm. And if he can you know, if he can put that same performance in next year, then mm-hmm. no doubt Knock he'll get a call. Yeah, he'll definitely get a call. Brian, how do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Yeah, I think it has come too soon for him. Um, like I say, you look at the, the midfielders at the disposal and he's not going to get in ahead of, ahead of any of them for me. But if he can consistently do it next year again, well, I'm sure he'll get a chance in, in, in later squads. 